Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story, lost arts discussions, fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by our military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast, that podcast giving a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we have Chief Warrant Officer 4, soon to be 5, Andres Navarro. But before we get into the episode, are you enjoying the podcast? Then go to thelostart.podbean.com. Check out the website. There is a merchandise tab. Go ahead and click on that merchandise tab. You can get you all kinds of cool little tricks. We got cups. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this cup right here. Oh, the Lost Art. Yeah. We got all kinds of goodies. We got hats. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. And then my favorite, and uh, I just got these in, so I'm very excited. You know, you have to stay motivated and you have to change your socks. So I also got <laughs> socks that say, stay motivated, change your socks. Not one type, but two, because I have one. With Uncle Sam telling you stay motivated and change your socks. So, anyways, I just throw that out there. Uh, you guys definitely need to jump on and, and buy some gear and and help support what we got going on here, giving our getting our voices out for all to hear. All right, with that, I got Andres. Andres, how you doing? I can't complain, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm glad you uh, took time out of your schedule as you're traveling around with the band and doing all the crazy stuff. Uh, took a yes, little sir. bit of time and uh, going to talk to me for a little bit. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. Well, hey, um, let's kind of go back to the beginning for you. Where did you grow up? Uh, and then talk us through kind of what led you to the military service. Yes, sir. Uh, again, thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. Uh, and uh, greetings to all my, my veterans out there. Uh, thanks for watching. So uh, I was born in South America. I was born in the, in the capital of Venezuela. Caracas is the name of the uh, the, the, the city. Uh, and I was born in November of 1978 uh, to a family of six. I'm the oldest of six. It's myself, my brother, oh, wow. and four sisters. And uh, okay. interestingly enough, out of the six of us, uh, four of us ended up joining the U.S. military at some point or another. Uh, so no I, my, kidding. My seven, Yep. Yep. And uh, of course, I, I'll come, I, you know, full circle to that. And when I want to finish answering your question, but yep. the, uh, the the eight of us, so my, myself, my brother, four sisters and my mom and dad migrated to the U.S. Uh, in September of 1991. And uh, we came okay. to the uh, the state of Florida, uh, the city of Miami, Florida. So we grew up from Miami to Fort Lauderdale, uh, our upbringing. Uh, so I was 12 years old when I came. And from the uh, age of 12 to like, you know, 17, 18 college time, I was in Florida. And, uh, you know, my dad, he's, he wasn't a Marine. He wasn't in the military, but he might as well have been because the way he treated us and the way he, he raised us. Uh, my dad, too, was one of six. He was the oldest of six, like I was. Uh, very, very rough upbringing, uh, trying to provide the best life he could for us. And in order to do that, he had to exert uh, a great amount of discipline in our nasty bodies. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He no, might that's have never, good. I like it. Yeah. Never been a drill instructor, never been a, a, a Marine, but he definitely raced us as such. So between, you know, <laughs> between his, his discipline and, and the love and candor of my mom, it was a great team to, to bring me to this point. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, how I ended up here. And I, I was saying out of the six of us, so I'm a, a U.S. Marine. My brother, uh, did a tour with the U.S. Army. Uh, then my, then okay. my sister after that also did a tour with the U.S. Marines. Uh, the two after that didn't do anything. And my youngest did a tour with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, no yep. kidding. Yep. Yes, sir. Wow. I, that, I had no no clue about that. I didn't yeah. know there was another one of you running around out there, uh, especially more, another Marine running around. You know, that's, yeah. that's good stuff. Oh, man. Wow. So uh, yeah. what initially drew you to uh, military service? You know, what what kind of pushed you in that direction? Okay, it's a great question. Uh, I've, at the outset, I think the lifestyle was just one of discipline. You know, uh, we call it military now, but uh, growing up was just the way we ran the house. You know, we were very structured. Uh, we had different chores. We were always held accountable. Expectations were high. 
uh, very, very similar to the military ecosystem. So uh, also, as you mentioned before, I'm a musician. And, uh, and if you're a musician, you know that the discipline and the commitment, the work ethic that it takes to master or at least to try to master an instrument is very similar to that of the military. Uh, very oh, yeah. regimented, very disciplined. So I think it was just my lifestyle, which is copacetic with that of the military lifestyle. And once I found out there was a possibility to continue on that lifestyle, because, you know, I went from high school to college. I went to Grambling State University in Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, s- same same lifestyle, same routine, same, you know, s- sort of commitment, same uh, discipline, uh, same, you know, daily grind. It was just, you know, the, the next thing for me to, to to move into. And I'm not sure I told you this, but uh, I actually auditioned for the Army before uh, the, from high school. I auditioned for the Army as a pianist. And, yeah, you, t- uh, you I, talked about that on the uh, the Memorial Day when when we did yes. that. You'd mentioned that, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, I, and I was going at that point. I wasn't. I was indifferent to which branch. I just knew that, that a military branch will continue to pay me to be a musician, and I can make a right. life as a professional musician. So not not knowing anything. Of course, I'm glad that the army didn't work out. Nothing against the army. I ended up going to school, but I always had that that itch um, in my soul to become part of a military service. And it wasn't until after college that I kind of kind of came across the lifestyle of a marine. My sister is a marine. My sister was in and out of the marine corps before I even came in. Uh, oh, so no she was there wow! Yeah, from from '99 to uh, 03 was her her tour, and I came in in '04. Uh, so, you know, I, I can tell you now that I'm, I'm loved now in my 20th year of service. I, I love everything the Marine Corps stands for. And, and, and my personality, uh, my demeanor, uh, the way I view life is very, very in concert, in concert with the Marine Corps. So I'm glad it's the Marines. But it wasn't an epiphany, AJ. It wasn't an epiphany. It was just what what, yeah. what my, my life had led to. The military was the next sequential step. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and then you, uh, so you, did you audition, uh, you didn't audition at college, you auditioned when you were teaching, right? I auditioned in between classes when I was teaching. So I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I, I taught high school for a couple of years and okay. uh, it was, I actually went back to my old high school. I took over that program. So it was a very well-established program. I had a blast. It was cool, but I quickly realized that it wasn't, that wasn't for the long term. I couldn't do that uh, for the long term, the way I was doing it. It wasn't sustainable. Uh, yeah. And those of you who understand high school, you know, band directorship, you you wear many hats. Uh, looking for me, I was single. Uh, I wasn't dating anybody, so I had my my entire self to 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 give to to the program. But yeah, I was uh, a, a, interesting enough. A a contingent, a small a quintet, came down from Paris Island and performed. They usually what actually what we're doing now in Portland. Uh, yeah. doing a bit of a, a recruiting tour. They came down to my school, performed for the class. No one from the class joined except me. That day I, I said, you know what? I did. That's what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Uh, let's get to it. And when when the ball started rolling, you know, it was time for an addition. I mean, I, I wasn't a regular pulley. I couldn't go to all the pulley functions, and I was a teacher. I was an educator. So uh, the only way I can I can audition was between classes. It was literally a seven-minute audition. I got in there. I played through whatever they needed me to play, play through. Uh, and I guess the impression was such that I was able to request San Diego. And it was available. It was given to me. And the rest is history. This is an O2. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and so you uh, came in in the program, the U2 Alphas? Uh, which which means if you scored a certain level uh, on your instrument, you could, instead of going to the schoolhouse, you would skip the schoolhouse and go directly to the band uh, and get your uh, on-the-job training while you're there. Yes, though though I chose to go to the school. I wanted to go to the school. I, I, I was in no oh, okay. rush. Yeah, I mean, I was I was a single guy. I was 25, 26 at the, at the time. And yeah. I, I was I just wanted to take it all in. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't about to skip any steps for the sake of convenience. I just wanted to you know, get it all in. Uh, and yeah. in fact, that was that was me on my only time as a student at the School of Music. <laughs> as a basic student. Oh, so you you attended the whole uh, basic course. I didn't know that. I, th- yeah, I yeah. thought you uh, I, I didn't did. do that. No, kidding. Uh, I didn't okay. have to. I didn't have to, yeah, but yeah. I was again. I, I was in no rush. I just I was taking yeah, it all yeah. in, man. I wanted I wanted to have it all. So, uh, what was your impressions going through the school of music? You know, you you obviously come from a very disciplined family. You you uh, went went into uh, you know to college, honed your craft even more. Then uh, now you're you're joining the military, going to the schoolhouse, and all you're doing is playing music. Uh, you know, how was that? Like, what was that like for you? Man, it was exactly what I needed in my life at that moment. 
you know, God had has had he has been, he is, and 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 uh, pray that he continues to be over my career, uh, and ordering my steps accordingly. Uh, like I say, AJ, I wasn't I wasn't about to skip any steps, even if I even, even if I wanted to skip, I want to know what to skip. You know, so I just say, <laughs> just, just just give give it all, and I had a blast. I was, uh, you know, I was a 26, 26 year old, you know, private first class, you know, Lance Corporal. I didn't mind it, you know, people that were much younger than me with higher ranks, but I was there to play music. It was there where I met uh, some good friends that to this day are still, um, you know, good friends of mine. Even the, my my commanding officer then, Chief Officer Gray. Uh, and at some point tonight, we'll talk. We'll talk about him. He's actually coming to my promotion this September. He was the first officer I met, no first band officer. And he was. Uh, and I guess it's a good time to tell you the story now, man. I was again. I, I, yeah, didn't, I didn't. I didn't mean to skip anything. I just wanted the, the entire experience. I had no clue what a band officer was at that point. What a warrant officer. No, no clue. I was fresh off a of boot camp. Fresh up for MCT, just taking it all in, learning how to be a marine. I met you know just this this new world. Uh, that was given to me. I was just over the moon over it, man. I, I was having a blast and met Chief Warrant Officer Alex Gray. And uh, at the end of the training, the entire eight months of the School of Music, he brought me in his office and he literally had a, a, a pair of, of Warrant Officer ranks in his hand. And he sent me down to his office. He held my hands, man. And he prayed over my career there. I had no clue what was going on. He said, you know what? I see something in you. I think you're going to be a future band officer. And I me mean, not knowing, uh, I could have sat there and, and prayed my life away to some sort of cult, not knowing what he was doing. But uh, I'm convinced God used that to 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 order the steps for the rest of the you know the, the 20 years to follow. So all that to say, I'm glad I didn't skip the school of music. I, won't, I, I don't think I'll be where I am today had I circumvented that that ring yeah that checkbox wow yeah that's pretty awesome that he pulled you aside and saw it in yep. you uh from the beginning uh mm -hmm. and uh and basically told you you're going to be a band officer uh and yeah. to, to pull you aside uh, this is just me but to pull you aside and pray with you and, you know and then you know give you the chevron or the uh the bars and say yep. hey you, you got this man that's incredible I had no clue. I had, had no. He could have. He could have as well. God gave me a pen. I would have signed my life away right there. I, I had no clue what I was doing, man. I just say hey, that's my band officer. Let's do it. And, and by the grace <laughs> of God, man, here I am, twenty years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, after the school of music, um, where you ended up going to San Diego, correct? That's where you and I met. Yeah, I, I got there yeah, May twenty yeah, fifth yeah. of 05. Okay, tell me a little bit about that uh, transition for you. Man, that was another. Uh, man, I I tell you, I have nothing bad to say about the Marine Corps, man. Man, I'm just that idiot that just been loving every every minute <laughs> of it. You know what I'm saying? I have zero bad experiences. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was so I went to school, as I mentioned before, I went to college in Grambling State University in Louisiana, and mm -hmm. the, the the five years that I was there, three years in a row, for some reason, we ended up traveling to San Diego, uh, from Louisiana. There was a traveling band. We actually wow. performed at the Super Bowl in 1998 at Qualcomm Stadium, uh, the, the Broncos and Packers Super Bowl. So we were in the halftime you know, show for that. Uh, wow. And I have to say that, that God had brought me to San Diego, not knowing you know, for three years in a row we traveled. My first time in California, uh, I was a, a brand new college student, fell in love with the place. It was it was beautiful, only to find out a few years later that I can actually serve in San Diego. So the moment yeah. I, I, knew, I heard there was a Marine band in San Diego, I jumped on it. Uh, and I got there, man. You've been to San Diego. California is a beautiful oh, yeah. place. Beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it was the depot. So I got another healthy dose of Marine Corps basics, you know, uh, <laughs> with the drill instructors and, you know, the daily, the weekly grind. Uh, it is there that I, I, I developed a, a very intimate passion for ceremonial music, whether I, I liked it or not. I had no 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 choice. As you were there, yeah. we played it every every week. So you either fell in love with it or you hated it. Either way it goes, you were gonna spend time with it. You know, so the right. red pouches, yeah. you know, the uniforms, the Charlies, it was there where I learned how to iron my uniform to the point where the, those things marched themselves because they were so freaking crusty. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, that's true. But that, that was where I met you, Schmidlin, you know, Poe, Pestek, you know, the, the greats, Price, Davis, Hayes. Uh, Paradis. I mean, just again, God continues to to, to set this 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 little garden for me, man. When I, I met my 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 wife in San Diego, I met her okay. in August twenty August twenty seventh of two thousand five. So three months after I got 
to MCID and met her. Uh, okay. We didn't start dating until a year later. But, uh, you know, that was my very first band. And again, uh, getting to know, I think your very first band uh, as a musician is one of the most consequential bands because it is there where you kind of get the, the first dose. Um, your first band uh, was Twenty on Palms, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah so you, you know, you you get the the very healthy dose of what the Mariko stands for, what it could be, and it's from there that you make your decisions. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we we can say we have some good leaders, bad leaders. Hey, we had the leaders that we needed to have. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was there where I met cats like you, and uh, where our relationship began in two thousand and six. Uh, you know, and uh, you have, and I said it before, man, you have a lot to do with what I've done with my career, following your steps, most specifically on the drill instructor side of the house, because, you know, we, yeah. we saw those those drill instructors every week doing their thing. Yeah. You know, we, we had those ceremonies memorized, we had the speeches memorized, and how could you not become a drill instructor after that? But yeah, MCRD San Diego was my first band. I was there from 2005 until 2008. I got married August 10th of 08, and sh shortly thereafter, I moved to a PCA to uh, Miramar. Okay, so uh, just up the road then uh, yep. up to Miramar. So let's let's stay with San Diego real quick. Um, yep. What were some of the things that you remember specifically about uh, being in Marine Band San Diego? Uh, some highlights or uh, anything like that? Some highlights. Uh, believe it or not, the, the first thing that stands out to me is that I could not have picked a better band. It's because I believe the both depot bands are with the, the, the mecca of all things Marine Corps basics. You know, I think uh, the you know, one, uh, an individual as a Marine begins to deteriorate after they leave the depot. Uh, yeah. You know, it is the, the purest form of Marine Corps, uh, you know, metal, the Marine Corps fiber. After that, then it's up to you to sustain the transformation. So that was the first thing, of course. Uh, we all remember our drill instructors from boot camp, the, the legendary drill instructors, right? I was a recruit in Paris Island, but ended up in San Diego. So seeing that campaign cover every single day, wanting to be that, uh, I was pretty old and I, I, I made it known from the beginning. I want to be a drill instructor. I want to be a drill instructor. Uh, so that experience is being there uh, for the ceremonies, hearing the speeches, watching the recruits. It was like it was like God sent me. Uh, he could have sent me anywhere else, but he sent me to that place where I got to immerse myself in all things Marine Corps, like perhaps yeah. only the Blue Diamond could have done. But even in the Blue Diamond, we didn't hold as many ceremonies as we did in MCRD. Mm -hmm. Highlights also is meeting cats like you uh, and those of you who had a, a very influential role in my career. Uh, interesting enough, AJ, you know, I, I met Adam Pestic, you know, Gunny Pestic then, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who was another, you know, and believe, believe you me, uh, his son. Uh, Noah Pesek is my Marine right now. Oh, is you know? he out there? Yeah, he's yeah, here yeah, in my band. Nice. Know? And, and there's, you, you, there's some, some stories you can't make up, man, the way the way God works things out. Uh, but that, we used to tour a lot as well. I, I got I got used mm -hmm. to what a recruiting tour was all about. Friendships, it is there that I that I got to learn the ecosystem of uh, ecosystem of a Marine band. The billets, you know, the, the band officers, band masters, the major, all that good stuff. It was there when I decided that I was going to be a band officer. You know, at that mm -hmm. band, you know, this is the path for me. And from that point, you know, God led my steps to become one. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I could not have picked a better first impression of the Marine Band program. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Uh, and I, I I thoroughly enjoyed my time on the depot as well. Uh, it is monotonous sometimes. You do the same, you know, like every week, it's the same thing almost. Uh, yeah. But with all the other things, I mean, we got to go do parades. We got to go, you know, on recruiting tours, those types of things. It kind of. It, it balanced it out a little bit for me, but yep. uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, same thing, seeing all the drill instructors, seeing all the recruits, like on a daily basis, hearing them yelling and screaming and all that good stuff. So, yeah, yep. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, yep. So uh, talk to me about uh, going to Miramar now. And at this time, you're a sergeant going to Miramar? I was a sergeant. I was a sergeant okay. going to Miramar. Uh, 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 something else I, I, forgot, I forgot to mention, a highlight also of, uh, and I should have said this at first, which has also, again, it was such a such a, uh, a a pivotal time in my career, and it was my first band. One of the things that sticks out also is I, when I was there, if you remember, remember I was able to uh, uh, earn a master's degree in conducting. Oh yeah, uh, I was yeah, doing yeah, that yeah, concurrent yeah. from a corporal to sergeant. Uh, of course, for two and a half years, you know, weekends were gone. 
Uh, you know, people were enjoying San Diego. I was doing homework, so on and so forth. But I remember the leadership then let me have one day a week. Remember that one day a week, every mm -hmm. Tuesday. I didn't have to come. To, I didn't have to come to work. And I thought that was impossible. I said, when I asked him, can I, I'm trying to pursue a master's degree in conducting from San Diego State. Would you let me go one day a week? I thought they were going to kick me out of the office, man. Uh, <laughs> no, man. Uh, Ed, Eddie Hayes, Mar uh, uh, Dan Price, Jack Davis, uh, and uh, Poe, Gunny Poe, uh, made it happen, man. And I was taken aback. I said, you see, you're going you're gonna to let me go one day. I don't have to come to work. I can go work on this degree and come back. Uh, and you know what? I've been able to do the exact same thing for other Marines after that. Uh, you know, That's awesome. throughout my career, you know, because it was done to me. It is possible. Uh, and it, all, it also allowed me to see that the Marine Corps will invest in you that way. This is the family mm -hmm. that I came into. So I was blown away, man. I was able to, to, to finish my master's degree in, in 08, uh, then got married and then moved to Miramar. Miramar was interesting because. You know, it's not that I really wanted to go to Miramar. I was completely indifferent. I wanted to go somewhere else, honestly. But my wife from San Diego. I met my wife yeah. uh, uh, right there in the San Diego area, Poway. And I wanted to find a way to keep her there. I didn't want to move her so soon. So not just that. Edward Hayes, if you remember, went from MCRD mm -hmm. to Miramar. So I, I like That's the right. way he did business. So I, I wanted to go, you know, keep serving with him. So it just worked out. It was a very harmonious move, uh, uh, very sequential. It, it made sense. Uh, so I went from the depot to the wing, a little different, different mentality. Of course, you know, you hear swing with the wing and everything is kind of <laughs> more relaxed there, which is fine for me. Uh, I, I just wanted to, I wanted to keep my wife in place. I wasn't ready to move yeah. her yet. I was getting close to her parents. And again, another positive note on the Marine Corps able to keep me. I, AJ, I, I, I have not had a bad experience in the Marine Corps at all, man, at all. I, uh, went to Miramar. I only lasted two years in Miramar, but in Miramar, Miramar stands out because, as you know, uh, you may pick up sergeant in your first band, but you will, you will always be a lance corporal in in the eyes of that band, in the eyes of that building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you always be a lance corporal. Uh, it is what well, I always preach this is only when you get to your second band you begin to impose your will on that band as a, as a as a sergeant of Marines. You know. Because you yeah. check in as a sergeant, usually with one hash mark, you know, usually your name on your chest. You know, you go out there, you know, loud and proud or whatnot. Uh, but it was in Miramar where I met another set of consequential leaders like R.C., Luis R.C., mm -hmm. uh, Jaffa Jones, uh, the late Sean Stewart was there, uh, there as well. Words, uh, nay. Uh, it was just a, a full circle moment for me, you know, and it is at that, at that band that I got selected for staff sergeant in 09 mm -hmm. and picked up staff started in April of 2010. It was also at that band where I had my first son. Uh, Caleb oh, was okay. born. Yeah, he yeah. was born uh, October of 2010. Uh, okay. And it's also from that band that I followed your footsteps and I requested to go to drill and show to school. Uh, and yep. I left in January 2011. Yep. Wow. Wow. That was a quick turnaround there. Uh, was. So, so, all right, had, had your first son. Uh, now you're going drill instructor school. And uh, tell us about uh, drill instructor school itself. How was that? Man, well, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to give God the praise for everything. Because check out the story. Check out the story, AJ. So, again, I know I had to do something with my career. You know, you were you were one of the ones... Uh, in fact, you were the one that told me, if you remember, you said, Here, here's an easy formula for you. Do a couple of bands and go do something else. There's no need for a third band. You either go to USC or go do a BBL. Do not go to a third band. I remember people like you, you told me you had made a deal with the devil by going to Okinawa <laughs> for one year. I remember yeah. that. So, so yeah. certain things stick in the back of my mind, man. So I was in Miramar. I knew I had to do something. I just picked up staff. I, could, I didn't want to go to another band. Uh, I needed to do something, something drastic. Uh, I didn't want to go to school of music because I thought it, to me it would have been a waste of time. And I, on, yeah. on top of all that, I wanted to be a drill instructor. I was 32 years old, so I wasn't getting any younger. I had to make the, mm -hmm. make the call then. And last of all, I wanted to keep my wife still in California because I knew if I want to become a drill instructor, I'm going to be gone for three years, and I'd rather be gone while keeping my wife in her in her, her 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 little niche, you know what I mean. I didn't want yeah. to take her all the way to Paris Island. So if I can, if I can keep my wife here, if I can go be a drill instructor, if I can just go have my first kid, you know, and continue on my career, let me call the monitor, brother. I called the DI monitor, and guess who the monitor was? It was exactly. my kill. It was my kill hat when I was a recruit man. 
Get out of here. Are you serious? I'm serious, man. I called the DM and said, hey, who's this? And his name is Gunnar Sergeant Flores at the time. I said, I said you see, do you remember me? He goes, he goes, Navarro, huh? You were the Bible recruit. Because I, I brought my Bible to, uh, to boot camp, you know, yeah. and uh, he, I'm telling you, he remembered me, man. He remembered wow. me. I said, I say, I say, Guns, my name is Sergeant Navarro. I'm just calling you. I got. I want to go to the high school. I put my package in. Would you please keep me in the West Coast? Uh, and of course, he gave me hell, but he he knew. So yeah, I got you, though. You're good. You stay on the West Coast. So you know, it's just again, God just 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 taking care of my career, man. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, orders came orders came through, and in, uh, in January, class two, tech eleven, January fifth of twenty eleven, I started the high school. My son Caleb was three months old. Three months Holy old cow. to the high school. Yeah, man. And uh, but uh, and that's that's when it all started, man. I'm following your footsteps. Wow. The high school was great. The high school was was tough. It's exactly what I needed it to be. You know, I was I was the band geek in the high school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, it, it's in the high school that I met your classmate, man, McBride. Look, my McBride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. He, I know you had him with the show too. He, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. my. It was a good episode. My, yeah, man. He was my 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 platoon commander, my my my, my squad instructor. Uh, oh, okay, man. Okay. He's he seemed very nice on your podcast. I I tell you, he wasn't that nice back then. <laughs> that dude, that dude was the devil. But uh, <laughs> but again, again, brother, God sent him my way because he that 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 dude that marine made me a drill instructor like none other man. The task that yeah. he would give me. I didn't know back then. You know what I'm saying? I was I was complaining. I was a staff a staff NCO in charge of my 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 squad. The things that he asked me to do, I was like, man, are you serious? But no, he knew what he was doing, man. And yeah. uh, you know, I, I believe it was his influence and guidance that led to my selection as the undergrad of that class, two tac eleven. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Uh, and he has a very uh, unique story, kind of like yours. Uh, you know, uh, came yeah came from Chad. Uh, and then came over and uh, joined the military. He's he's still doing it. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure where he is right now, but uh, yeah, he's still out there kicking it, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah. All right. So uh, now you're going into drill instructor. You're going out of the schoolhouse. You're going to be a hat actually on the street, pushing recruits and doing all that type of stuff. So talk talk to me about that transition for you. Uh, hey man, I'm gonna continue to bring God into the picture. I hope you don't get too tired of that because that's 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 my. <laughs> it's, that's okay. My, it's okay. It's okay. My the claim love, to man. fame is my claim to fame. I, I have I have no other. I, I don't know what else to give the credit to, because now here's another another place where you come in. Uh, I'm not sure the audience knows that. I, you know, the, your your very last cycle was the beginning of my very first cycle. You know, and I'm not sure the audience knows that when I was in the high school, I was there with the uh, to bird dog. Uh, with your your platoon in Fox Company, yeah, you know, that's now, right. I originally, you know, I, I was a golf company recruit. Uh, I wanted to go back to golf company, uh, but you know, when I when I bird dog with Fox Company, I I was very attracted to the professionalism and the way the Fox Company did business. I was able to bird dog your platoon to the point. If you recall, as I sent you a text that evening, say, hey, man, can you get me to Fox Company? I wouldn't mind going to Fox. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, that. Oh, yeah, so you know, going back to you, man, you're very right when you're 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 Marines now. I earned the last the last uh, uh, week, and I was getting that was my peak, my my preparation week, and I needed yeah. to get the house set up right, and I I had no other uh, no other you know resort, no no other uh, tool for help, so I reached out, and you brought your entire platoon over to my my <laughs> squad bay, and you just. Gave him the freaking the snap and those that cats went in there and set up the entire house, man. And I was like, hell yeah, heck yeah, and faster than my <laughs> counterparts. And I say that because that, as you know, from that point, I that, that began to set conditions for you know my position in the in the company. You know, being yeah. a brand new mm -hmm. hat and that that setting up the house supposed to stress <laughs> out the new hat. Uh, I wasn't stressed at all, not 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 on that end, because you came through for me, set up my entire house, yeah. obviously with the focus on other things. So, uh, no man, it was it was a blessing that came to the the, the, the first cycle. Uh, so I did I did five cycles as a hat, uh, and I was able, okay. I was able to move up move up every every cycle. Uh, the first was of course the fourth hat, the third hat, the first two cycles that were came out as honor platoon. Uh, then my third nice. cycle I was a day. Uh, the fourth cycle I was a senior. My first first cycle was a senior drill instructor. Uh, 
Then my fifth cycle came in, and it was that very cycle. Uh, I remember September 5th of 2012, the, the warrant officer list came out, and, and my name came up on the list. And uh, they, that day, they pulled me. They pulled me out of the uh, that week, that very week. It was swim week, I remember. It was right after T-17. No it's kidding. Uh, yes, the, the, uh, Sergeant Major Wickham. Uh, and and yeah, then yeah, yeah. Lieutenant Colonel Erickson pulled me out of the trenches. I never thought I would shed a tear by leaving recruits. Uh, but I said, <laughs> listen, I said, hey, let, let, let me finish the cycle. I said, nope, at this point, you are you become a liability. Not necessarily you, but if you had mm. to do something stupid, if because seniors are doing anything stupid, if you had to do something stupid, that falls on you. Yeah. Like, we need you to we need you to show up at TBS in January. So I understood that it pulled me out. So my tour on, as a drill soldier was cut cut short for a few months. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was, again, it was, uh, those times were, were, uh, concurrently the best of times and the worst of times. That, that's the best <laughs> I can say. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly how I say it. Yeah. yeah. It was, I always say it, it was the best, worst three years of my life. <laughs> well, yeah. It, it, there were some things that you will net that I would, I, I can't believe God put me through, man. Uh, but of course I was away from my son. You know, for, for all mm -hmm. that time, and you know how it is. You know, Lori will bring him in for 15, 20 minutes here and there. So I miss my my son's first two years of life. I can't get that back. I mean, I'm paying those in full yeah. now. Trust trust you me. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, with things, it, it is then, I'm not sure how it was for you, AJ. But for me, the drill field has been a BC AD moment in my career. You know how we separate history before Christ mm -hmm. and Anos Domini and BC? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what the, the drill field has been for me. Uh, it, it almost as if this is a drill field. My career took a, a turn after the drill yeah. field. You know, I, I learned a lot about myself. I thought I knew myself then. Mm -hmm. Negative. I, I learned what I can do with one hour of sleep. I learned what I can do, you know, what I can do with, with not, a, not a decent meal in weeks. I learned what 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 the pressure, what peer pressure can can feel like, and how you manage that. I mean, I found out a, I found out a whole lot about myself that I didn't know. And yeah. you come out of there, you come out of there with a with a very humble sense of invincibility. You know, mm -hmm. like you can do anything, you can do anything. No matter, you can't throw anything my way now. You, to stress me out, you got to work very very hard. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that's true. That's a drill yeah. Drill for you. Yeah, and I, I will say, uh, and not just a drill field. You can look at recruiters that come back. You can look at MSG guys that come back. But anybody yeah. going outside, doing something like that. Now, in my opinion, I think being a drill instructor is a little more difficult, but that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah. But from a leadership perspective, you know, when one of those individuals comes into your band or comes into your unit, it's it's almost like a sigh of relief because, yep. you know, that person is focused. That person can get the mission accomplished and they go throughout their day after that, because like anything that comes up, you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I that's not a big deal for me, you know, and uh, that's, that's the thing that I, that I found for in myself. And then I saw, you know, as I, as I moved up uh, from other people and, and it's just nice being able to look at somebody and go, Oh, you were a drone instructor. Okay, cool. I know what I can give you, you know? Yeah. There's, there's, there's something about that ribbon, man. And I'll tell you uh, right now, we're currently on a recruiting tour, AJ. And the, the state of recruiting now is very, very, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Mm -hmm. To where I, 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 you know, just to kind of highlight some current times and against, I never thought people would escape the recruiting field by going to be a drill instructor. I never thought I see the day, but uh, it's it's that tough here right now. It really is. So hats off wow. to the recruiters. Hats off. Uh, but what I would say is that the one difference from the I do the is just the physical. You can't escape the yeah. physical. Oh yeah, you know, and, For and sure. that's that 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 is. You have to be a human specimen, and of course, that I took those words from uh, Star Major Seau. He always said, mm -hmm. you, you need to be a human specimen. And something that I, that I think they built it for, that I don't think recruiting would have given me, uh, and, and, and all its glory is commendable nevertheless, is that since that point, I've been, I have, I've been forced to put a penny in the physical bank every single day. PT in every mm -hmm. day. There's a certain way I have to look in uniform just because I have that ribbon on my chest. And and I, I have to I have to look a certain way. I gotta try to out PT this freaking young idiots in the band. You know, <laughs> and I gotta be I gotta be the first. Of course, that's that's I'm getting older, man. It's becoming harder and harder. But uh you know, <laughs> after the after the drill field, man, yeah. I got that I got that chip on my shoulder. You know, I gotta go out because yeah. you know it's it's all physical. To the mm -hmm. point where, I, honestly, nobody cares if you can even drill. Can you outrun a freaking recruit? Can you can you be out there all day and <laughs> sweat it out? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 
Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm so thankful that 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 happened in my career, man. Because I wanted, I uh, I knew I had the gift of music. You know, I knew I know I knew God mm -hmm. had blessed me with that. It's, it is a gift from God, but I didn't want to become a band officer based on my musical ticket alone. I didn't want to do that. Right. I had tried to deploy it from Miramar. In fact, mm -hmm. I was set to go deploy it from Miramar, uh, and two of my name came up on the staff sergeant list. I was set to go. Really, my name came up on the staff sergeant list. My deployment was pulled. Uh, so every every step thereafter, every station thereafter, I've tried to deploy. It didn't come to fruition, so hey, it is what it is. But I, I didn't want to get to be a band officer or an officer based on how good I can be a musician. For everybody out there, if you've been struggling, you're having a hard time, you're thinking about hurting yourself, anything like that, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, the VA has some great resources. You can uh, dial 988, press option 1. You can also text 838-255. Or you can go to veteranscrisisline.net, click on that chat icon. Any of those options are going to get you in contact with somebody that can help you out. Uh, but always remember, one veteran life loss is one too many. I care about you. Andres cares about you. The entire veteran community cares about you. So please, please, please reach out for help. All right. With that, Andres, one last time, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing. Thank I appreciate it. And to all the listeners out there, stay motivated. Change your socks. Mm -hmm.